Hello everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome to Dragon Age Multiplayer. So today in our stream we're going to show the multiplayer mode of Dragon Age Inquisition. Uh, my name is Sila Costa, I'm producer from Dragon Age Inquisition. I have here with me on my side Billy Busco, please present yourself Billy. Hi, I'm Billy Busco, uh, as Sila mentioned I'm an associate producer on multiplayer. Uh, and uh, with us outside of the room here we actually have three other team members. Uh, we have Amelia Von Hayden, we have uh, Josh Stixma, and we have Luke Barrett. So they'll be playing in another room with us. Uh, you won't hear them today, but uh, in a future pod, uh, cast, we'll make sure to include them. All right. Um, so today, we want to give an overall presentation for you guys. Uh, what is Dragon Age multiplayer about? So it's a four-player co-op experience. It's a party-based adventure. And we, we're going to go through all the main topics of uh, what, what does it mean to be uh, playing Dragon Age uh, Inquisition, the multiplayer mode. Uh, so let's get it going. Actually, I'm like a, as you guys can see on the screen, we, this is the main lobby of multiplayer, of Dragon Age multiplayer. Uh, you can see the four players that are, are, are lined up for the, for the match. We have one keeper, one archer, another keeper, and a legionnaire. Uh, so Billy, are you playing with the keeper today? Uh, today I'm going to go with keeper. Uh, we've got a uh, loadout with two keepers here just to kind of balance the, the party. We start off with three classes, but uh, before we get into some of that, maybe we should go into the store and get my, uh, my starting pack just so we can get some some fresh gear. That's a good idea. Let's go to the store first then. All right. So the first time you come into the store, you're going to actually see that you get a free Inquisition surplus crate, and that's going to give you a little bit of extra gear. Get you started up. Uh, so when you're first matching, we're going to give you something to kind of get you going uh, right out of the gate. So we'll open this up. It's free. What Let's do you get? see, Let's see what we got here. So we got a healing potion. Those are going to be really, really valuable, especially early on uh, with the challenge. All right, so I got a lightning staff. That's perfect for our keeper. I'm going to go in ahead and uh, make sure I equip that right away. And yeah, let's equip it. All right. We go to inventory. And I got weapons here. And actually cycle through here. I got different staffs. As you can see at the top of the screen, we have different uh, filters there. So I started with an Inquisition staff, but I just earned, uh, earned this Disciple lightning staff. So I'm going to make sure we equip that here. Give us a bit of a boost. So a bit more damage, as you can see, from 24 up to 32. And now it's going to cast uh, Lightning Ability. So to, in today, by the way, we're playing with level 1 characters, right? Because yeah. we want to show the progression. I'm like, when, once you start multiplayer with level 1 characters, how do you equip your characters in the beginning? How are you going to level them up? Exactly. We'll go back here. And uh, just for quick visibility, when we first came into the mode, before uh, we started uh, streaming here, we all picked our characters, so the very first time you start in multiplayer, it's going to give you a chance to pick your character. As you can see, there's three classes that start you off, uh, or three characters, sorry. And uh, we're going to go with the Keeper for myself. We got uh, our new uh, Lightning Staff equipped. Yeah, and Dragon Age uh, multiplayer will ship with 12 characters at launch, uh, so 12 really awesome characters. Uh, and three of those 12 characters are unlocked since the start. Absolutely. Um, so, alright, so... I'm going to give you a, a quick overview of uh, what multiplayer is. So we have a four-player co-op experience. Actually, we, we can we can go straight into the ma the match. You guys yeah. can level up, and I can I can give that introduction. Yeah. So uh, so uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll everybody will ready up here at the right trigger, and we'll get the match started. All right. So Dragon Age multiplayer is a four-player co-op party-based adventure, as, as I mentioned before. So that means that you have a party of four people, like let's say four friends playing together, um, and we have 12 characters available at launch, uh, four mages, four warriors, and four rogues. So you can pick your character, and that's very important actually for Dragon Age multiplayer. You have to play as a team, so you have to pick a character that, uh, that is going to help your party. So you can play four mages, for example, if you want, but it's going to be much more tough if you do so. Um, so usually uh, a, balance, um, a balanced party would have like a warrior, a mage, and a rogue, at least one of each class. Um, and usually one of the warriors is going to play the whole the role of the tank. Alright, so for the purpose of today, we actually just we joined each other as friends, we, we made a, a match together. But you'll be able to match make with, uh, with folks you're not familiar with. So you actually have the option to join with friends or go through public matchmaking if you don't have enough people online. And you can do a combination of the two. Uh, so if you have a friend, but you need to fill out those other two spots, you can do that as well. So today you can see we've uh, we've chosen, uh, we're on routine difficulty, that's a starting difficulty level, and uh, the team has jumped into the Elven Ruins. Uh, it's one of three environments we can travel to. Uh, and uh, so yeah, we'll head on through the stairs and get on their way here. So, 
Yeah, so Billy, can you actually show a little bit of your abilities here before yeah, we actually have absolutely. Up there? So this is our keeper, uh, Nerea, and uh, she's our support class. So she's got uh, an AOE here that she can drive around. Nice cursor here and cast barrier. So actually, cast barrier on her other keeper here just to keep that uh, that nice friendship alive. And I also have uh, a lightning attack with my lightning. Now this is my ability, but I also have the lightning staff. And you can see my basic attack can be chained together, and the final shot's a nice spread shot, which is great for hitting uh, enemies from above and from the sides. All right, so let's head forward. Uh, let's open the first. Uh, let's open the first door. All right. Go through the first combat. So, because this is a, a party-based adventure, we want you to play as a team, right? That means that you guys need to stick together during the match, and usually it's a good idea to have the warrior going first. Right? Absolutely. So we got uh, Corbin, our legionnaire, at the front there. He's going to open up our door. He's kind of pinged everybody here to let him, us know where he wants us to be. And into the dungeon. We were not poor today. All right, so we've got some enemies just up ahead. We can highlight them with up on the D-pad too, which is really handy because now all of our team members can see exactly where that archer is in the background. He's a bit peskier than uh, some of our other team members at the, the front line here, so. So you're playing with the keeper. The keeper is a, a support uh, support class, right? I'm like, can you can you go over what does that mean? Absolutely. So with the keeper here, uh, her starting ability, like I mentioned before, is uh, that barrier. It, she drives the cursor around. And she's going to actually want to try and keep that on. It's on cooldown right now, so you got to be careful with timing. But you want to keep that equipped, especially on our frontline warrior here. Our other keeper uh, has just granted barriers. You can see that little highlight around uh, the health bar on Corbin's health here. So that blue highlight. That right? little blue highlight there, that's just letting us know that, yeah, he's got barrier. And uh, the great thing here is having two keepers, we're able to kind of you know, tag team back and forth and make sure that we have that uh, up at all times. Oh, it looks like you, you, you just found a treasure room there. I think we've got something special here. I'm not the right class for this, though, so maybe we can get uh, our Legionnaire to come take a look at this. I think he's got the right foot size for this. Uh, Good the fin the finesse there of the we go, yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff we like to see. Right, so throughout your, your, your dungeon crawling and adventure, you're going to find some, some rooms that are treasure rooms, right? Uh, that means that you can find some gold coins, you can break some vases and find gold coins, and at the end of the treasure room, you can find also a treasure chest. Hmm. Now, these things are risky, because if we open it, sometimes it's gold, but sometimes there's someone here to... Oh, we got free gold. This is a, a, a nice lucky moment, because sometimes you'll come in here, and there's guardians, and you have to fight them off to be able to, you know, make it back into the dungeon, so... Yeah, so every treasure room is going to be a risk and reward situation. Um, so you have to look at your health, discuss with your party, should go to that treasure room. Um, and once you collect all the blue, all that gold coins, I'm like, what are you going to do with it after? Oh, uh, you know, the best thing we'll bring back as much gold as possible is going back into the store. So we bought that surplus crate to start us off. We have a bunch of different chests in the store, uh, and you can use those to buy, uh, to get more potions, more items, and even unlock new characters. Okay. So, so we need chest. more yeah. free gold. That's pretty sweet. Now, we've taken essentially a shortcut. We're going to end up behind enemy lines here. We'll see how that plays out. Oh, another thing that I noticed, I'm like, you can see on the screen that it was like plus 34 gold. Is that Absolutely. your gold or everybody's gold? How does uh, that work? Oh, yeah. Friendship. That's what it's all about. Teamwork and friendship. So we want to make sure that everybody gets that gold. So even though I didn't pick up that gold chest... I saw the 34 gold pop up for myself. That's because everyone on the team is going to benefit from that gold. It's really, really handy when you finish that match, go back to the store, be able to buy more gear. So, in, in short, as long as someone is picking up the gold, everybody, the team is going to be fine. Everyone profits, yeah. Right. There's no khakis in Dragon Age, but everybody gets profit, so that's awesome. Well, it looks like you have a mage in the comet now. Yeah, let's highlight him, make sure our team's aware. The Venatory Spellbinder? There we go, we got him target locked. Oh. I think he's angry at you. Oh, there we go. He's gone. Our archer made some quick work of him. Make sure we get our Legionnaire nice and covered. He's got full guard built up too, that's awesome. So he's playing really well, right? That's Absolutely, a tank. yeah, as a tank. Going that role, you can see those armor chunks are built up on his health bar. And that lets him uh, soak up even more damage for the team. Yeah, so as a tank, I'm like, uh, his main role, and that's important. I'm like, uh, every time you have a tank in, the, in your party, uh, he needs to be playing that role, right? He needs to be uh, uh, going in the front line. He needs to be attacking the enemies and generating aggro for himself. 
and as much as he can, he can also generate guard for himself, so that he has that extra barrier. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, he, he's our front line defense essentially. We want to keep, you know, our archer and our two keepers who are a little bit more delicate further back, attacking from range. Now, we've uh, we've cleaned out the area. You may have seen in the bottom left-hand corner, we saw that key collected icon pop up, and that means that we're free to move through to the next zone. Actually, a little radar down below will show us a little door icon that kind of points us in the direction where we want to head. So that means that you completed the zone, right? Absolutely, yeah. How many zones do we have on a... On so, uh, yeah, with, with each uh, mission, we basically have uh, five zones. And in between each of those zones, we have these little uh, recovery areas. So you can see here we have a health recovery font. So we're going to use that. Now, the great thing about this is this is going to restore everyone's health to full, regardless of difficulty, regardless of location. It's not area-based. It's actually going to give everybody full health. So you can actually start to use that in very different uh, tactical manners. So basically, your goal is to finish the zone. Absolutely. You know that if one of you finish the zone, you can get to that recovery phone. Exactly. Now, if one of us had fallen, uh, the great thing is we can get that uh, that doorway. It'll bring everybody back to life. And we'll also get that health recovery font to get them back to full health. So so even if you're, you're, you're downed, you're not completely out yet, which is great. Well, I noticed that the archer threw a few things on the ground. What uh, are those? Caltrops, everyone's favorite. The caltrops are fantastic because they're actually great for crowd control. You can actually, you know... Use an area like this. If you want to put caltrops down, it'll slow down the enemy and do a little bit of damage as well. So it prevents them from attacking as quickly, closing gaps against you. So I guess that he could use also on a choke point. Absolutely, yeah. That's that's where you're going to find the most effective use of uh, caltrops is setting up a choke point where you know the team members can then stay behind and use that essentially as a, a mini barrier or a blockade for the enemy to uh, have to sludge through. So since we were talking about the archer, let's go through the DPS class, right? I'm like, so the archer is one of the rogues, one of the DPSs. Uh, so that's the role that he plays in your party. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of the abilities that he has as a level one, I think it's like some sort of an explosive shot. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, one of the starting abilities, uh, Scylla mentioned, is the explosive shot. Now, if you hit it, it's going to do a massive explosion. And it's great because if it, you, know, you land that first shot, first strike, you get a little bit of a bonus as well. So... You can hit that first enemy, really kind of start the combat off on a bang, uh, quite literally, and then, you know, get the team moving in there, get our Legionnaire running up front, and then get support moving in with uh, barriers here. And he can hit multiple enemies with the explosive shot. Exactly, well. yeah. It's got a bit of an AoE, so it's uh, it's going to land uh, and hit multiple enemies, especially if you, you time it well, get them, you know, early on, and uh, try to get them when they're clustered. You're going to see a lot more damage pop up as a result. Oh, it looks like you have a new enemy there. Oh uh, yes, this guy, the big axe. This is the brute. You gotta be careful with him. We can highlight him. Now the great thing is target lock. We can use the right stick click. This is the venatory brute. And you can see he had a bit more health. He's a level four character. So we gotta be a little bit more careful with him. He's got that big axe. Oh, oh someone is down. We got a team member down here. So what happens when you're down? You can crawl away, right? Yeah. Let's try to get there. And I'll try to revive. Now you can run up and press and hold A. As long as you have your friend targeted, you'll get them back up. And thankfully, our other uh, well keeper done. here has gotten barrier on myself as we revived our team members, so we were nice and safe. Oh, I noticed also that once you revived, you got some XP. Absolutely, yeah. All about support, right? So we want to make sure that not just killing enemies, but there's support actions that you can do for your team. And those are rewarded as well. In fact, we've seen a lot of times where a match will finish, and the people who are doing the most support actions are the ones who will come up with the highest score. So as long as you, you're playing a role, if, you, if you're playing as a tank, if you're generating aggro and, and hitting enemies and like, or killing enemies, you're going to get lots of XP as well, right? Absolutely, yeah. If you're playing the DPS, dealing damage and killing enemies, you're going to get it. And if you're playing a support um, a support role, you're also going to get DPS. Exactly. Oh, sorry, X, uh, XP for it. Yeah, and, and the great thing about that is even a class like uh, our Legionnaire here, who's a warrior, but he's a tank. And so his support is going to come from blocking. So as he builds more of that guard, you can actually see he's going to get a lot more support XP as a result. I think he needs a barrier. Yeah, sorry, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm slacking here. We had uh, our first keeper uh, get that first barrier, and actually our archer did a great job placing those caltrops to set up a choke point here for us. Oh, but we got a stalker oh. here. He's our targeted enemy. Oh, I got to be very careful with him because he's got some blades. He's the uh, the two-bladed rogue of the Venatori faction. You gotta be careful with him. So. Yeah, we're playing here on the, the, the most, the easiest difficulty, right? The yeah. routine difficulty. Well, yeah. <laughs> and easy is, uh, uh, you know, an interesting word because, yes, early on, you're going to find that this is, this is going to be a challenge. You know, we're, we're fairly experienced players here, but with level one characters, it will be very challenging your first few matches. Uh, we're going to try and get some barrier here so we can stay alive. 
Oh, that mage just jumped behind us here. So you can see we got we got to watch for certain enemies that you know have the ability to uh, you know teleport. Oh, I've dropped here. Oh, you down. And our other uh, keeper here has jumped in, revived me. Now you can see I come back with some health, and uh, the great thing is that you know if we can survive to the next doorway, we'll be able to uh, get to the next health recovery font. I noticed some great team play there. Like so, the the the, the, the legionnaire, he was using his shield wall ability to raise his shield and block all the arrows. Uh, exactly. While the other mage was actually reviving you. Exactly. So blocking yeah. the attacks on you. So. Yeah, teamwork is going to be crucial for uh, success in, in the multiplayer mode. Uh, we really wanted to stress the importance of your roles, and uh, making sure that uh, everybody plays a role, everybody's you know contributing to the team. So we can see, yeah, there's uh, our good uh, legionnaire here is pointing out some gold. We want to make sure to take that back. But you can see almost uh, you know great coordination will play a huge benefit for us as well. Now, with all that coordination, uh, how do you guys... Now, obviously, we can't hear the party chat, but tell us a little bit about how you share that stuff on the different platforms with your teammates. What are your chat options? Uh, so with Xbox Live and, and uh, PSN, you're basically using the, you know, the first-party system, so we're, we're using uh, the headsets there. Uh, PC, we also offer uh, live chat with, uh, with headsets. So. Uh, PC, you actually offer the option of, uh, you know, live chat as it is or open chat and then we also offer uh, push to talk so oh you still can use the text the, the text also or like the text chat also on yeah. pc right yeah the origin support all right so caltrops at the top here so as these enemies want to try and make their way up we'll be uh, nicely protected it'll slow them down that brute's coming up again let's try to get a barrier here a great use oh. of the choke point oh there we go he's coming up and he's gonna enforce his way with that big axe so i know well so we didn't mention but you guys are playing the venatory faction right That's absolutely just one of the factions that you're going to find yeah. in dragon age mode player what are the other two that we're going to find uh so we have uh, as you said the venatory we also have the red templars and the demons and each will provide a different challenge very different uh, enemy sets uh you'll have to you know prepare for them a little bit differently so actually, we, one of the guys that is playing with us is Josh Stigma, the lead creature designer for Dragon Age Inquisition, both single-player and multiplayer modes. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to uh, bring him in for one of the sessions, and he's going to explain more about the creatures you're going to find on, on Dragon Age multiplayer. All right, so almost uh, through this wave here. Uh, you can see that Legionnaire is doing a great job at the front line, walking up the path here, creating a better choke point, and those Caltrops held... Uh, so, oh, we oh, got a little, what's that shiny, that little thing? shiny thing. Let's make sure we take him out. Looks like a nug. That, yeah, that's a golden nug. Oh, and look at that. Oh, wow, 64 gold. So we were able to get him quickly. He's he's a random event that can show up. Uh, you won't see him every match, but when you do, if you can take him out. Uh, and he's quick. you got to watch. Uh, I like to call him the bouncy ball in traffic. He can get you into some bad situations if you chase him. So the key is take him out quickly, and he's got some sweet, sweet loot inside of him. So. So yeah, uh, you can notice you can notice now that you can see the class door in the minimap in the bottom left side. I'm like you can see a question mark. That means that y you found the class door, which can lead to a treasure room or maybe a shortcut. Uh, so they open this new uh, uh, treasure room, very golden treasure room. Mm. Just a chest there. What's gonna go wrong? Let's see what happens here. Everything should be fine. Hey, yeah, we've locked out pretty good here. Uh, a lot of treasure rooms so far, no threats. All right. Free gold's always nice to have. You also mentioned previously about events, right? Like you, mm -hmm. you mentioned about the Golden Nug. Um, what kind of events we can also find through your dungeon crawling experience? Yeah, so uh, within the five zones, we have a couple zones where events will occur. And, and that's where you're going to see different things. So actually, earlier on, we saw in the top right corner, there was a health bar specifically calling out uh, one of the, uh, the stalkers. That's uh, the Venatory uh, uh, dual-bladed mage. Uh, sorry, dual-bladed uh, rogue? rogue, and uh, he was a VIP target for us. He's another one right here, actually, uh, up ahead here. But we're uh, we're gonna use uh, uh, tactic here. Sorry, I'm getting a little distracted. But yeah, yeah. Uh, with those events, <laughs> yeah, focus combat, in combat, combat is challenging, so we gotta be careful. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those events come up every uh, every time in uh, zones two and four, and they're a chance. They're completely optional. We took a lot of feedback from uh, working on Mass Effect Three. And we heard, you know, fans enjoyed playing those events that we had uh, on the, the different waves. But 
they didn't want to have to do them every single time. So what we did is we said, let's make them optional. If you do them, you complete them. You're going to get some gold bonuses. That's awesome because the more gold you bring back from a match, obviously you get to buy more in the store. Uh, but if you don't complete them, we'll let you continue on your way. So, and Of course, it's all themed towards uh, your your mission as agents of the Inquisition. They all serve a purpose, essentially. So, it, you know, it's the idea of that you're bringing back, you know, scrolls. You're going to recover scrolls that uh, are being burned by uh, the enemy faction. Or it might be, you know, escorting, a, you know, a trooper that's come through, a captain, maybe a messenger that's gotten themselves into a sticky situation, and they're not right, uh, really equipped for that. Uh, so as our awesome agents come in here, they're going to try and uh, get them through that match. So one of the questions that we're receiving uh, from our fans is how does that uh, uh, ties in with single player? Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, Dragon Age multiplayer, the, the characters that you have in multiplayer, they're oh. agents of the Inquisition. Um, so think that uh, oh. in single player, you are the Inquisitor and 